Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Spirit of Our Fellowship. Uh, Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And we wanna welcome everybody to our online worship experience and broadcast. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here today, but we do believe that God has led you here today to receive a word from him. We don't take it lightly that you're here with us today. So on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel and myself, we just wanna welcome everybody, welcome all of our Spirit of Fire people, our Spirit of Fire nation. We love you guys so much. We appreciate you. We're praying for you continuously and we pray God's well-being upon you. Also for all of our first timers, we wanna welcome you in and just tell you how much we love and thank God for you showing up today. Uh, listen, as I always say, there are many platforms that you can be on right now, but you've chosen to come and to join and connect with us today. So I'm asking everybody to take this time now to go ahead and set your watch parties, click share, share this message, share this live stream with somebody right now, share it to your pages, Facebook pages, let people know, then go on YouTube, um, uh, whatever social media platform, YouTube, uh, Facebook, wherever you're watching from, we want you to enjoy the stream today. And there's a word that God is going to share with you. So we want you to do that right now. Take the time to do that. Take the time. It's important, especially for those that are our members and partners, because if this is good for you, then listen, imagine what somebody else um, that's in need of this word can really benefit from what's being shared today and that God can really minister to their hearts. So this is your part that you can play. This is the part that you can play. Share right now, right now. I want everybody to share. You know, my thing is this, don't be ashamed to share. What is it that, you know, if you feel as though that this word is good for you, why wouldn't it be good for someone else? And so I just want to encourage you. And I want you to share that um, if you would today and check in. I want to hear from you guys, uh, from people, all of our members and, and partners, check in with us today. Let us know that you're here, that you're logged in. Um, I want you guys to receive this word today. Some may be on now, some may come on later, but I do believe that God wants you to share, to hear this word today. I'm going to start ministering. We're going to um, continue dealing with becoming. And with this, um, God has just laid some stuff on my heart. Even before I came and, and got ready to broadcast live, there were some things that the Holy Spirit really just started dealing with my heart about and just ministering to you in such a way to really get to the core of some things. And so I'm gonna ask this, this question once we uh, get going and get started, but before we do, I want us to have a word of prayer. But before I do that, for those that are first timers, we want you to connect with us. Let us know, this is your first time logging in. Let us know where you're logging in from and uh, so that we can be a blessing to you. We wanna know where you're logging in from. And uh, so we just wanna give you a shout out. Um, I know sometimes people love anonymity. You can kind of peep in and peep out and go in this one and go into that one. But we want to connect with you and we want to love on you. We have a mandate to teach God's people who they are for you to live a life and to understand who you are in Christ and to understand what you have available to you. And it's just at a point that God is saying it's time to manifest and to receive everything in your life that he um, sent his son Jesus to die for and that Jesus died for and that he created for us to live. So whether it's in your spiritual life, whether it's having sound mental health and strength for you to be strong in your physical body, for you to be well, it's just time for you to be well in every area of your life. And we're not gonna tolerate sickness or disease to ravage our bodies in any way, shape, fashion, or form. And we're gonna add resistance and we're gonna be fit to fight that we not only fit spiritually, but fit mentally, fit physically, financially, in our relationships, in our purpose, and us doing everything in, in, that God created and called for us to do. And so we wanna deal with those things. And it's, it's just time, man, it's time to manifest. For some of you, you suffered too long. For some of you, you just, you've been believing God or you've been praying and God is saying it's time for you to now to come out of that place into a place of acquisition, into a place of manifestation, into a place where you're seeing the stuff begin to work in your life. Because to you, is it only seems like theory until it begins to happen or work. But God is saying you gotta believe first and you gotta trust him. And listen, and I know we tell you these things and preachers have told you this for years. And so now is the thing where, God, I've been hearing this stuff, but now this is the time to possess and put it on what we've been thinking about, what we've been praying about, what we've been sowing for, what we've been declaring and decreeing. 
God is saying this is the time for you to receive and this is the time for you to shine. This is a scripture that's our foundational scripture out of Isaiah says arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And so we want to make sure that we want you to arise into the fullness of what you already have, what God has already provided unto us. The promises of God are yes and amen. And as you can tell, I'm ready to let this thing roll, man. I'm ready to preach today and to teach and to deposit because the spirit of God spoke to me the other day. And I was just talking to him about some things, some endeavors, some things I'm working on, some things I desire. And, and I just believe that the spirit of God really dealt with me and says, you know what? You're not just a motivational um, speaker or preacher, but you're a transformational speaker. You're a transformational preacher where when the words come out of your mouth, they're to help renew the minds of my people to now or deposit that word into their spirit to help renew their mind, to bring them out of the situation that they're in. And so this anointing, this force of faith is going to begin to manifest even as I'm preaching, even as you're sitting there. I need for your involvement now. I need for you to be ready to receive what God is saying to us today. What thus saith the Lord. And so this is a time. This is a time to rise up out the ashes. This is a time for you to get yourself together. This is a time of great recovery in your life. And so I want you to be ready. I want you to be in great anticipation today. I want you to pull. I want you to draw. I want you to say, God, speak to me. Come on, Lord, speak to me today. And God is going to honor that request. So let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you. We bless you for this an opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords. Think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the word of God. There is no distance in the spirit. So I ask right now, as the word is being preached, thank you that as manifestations of the gifts of the spirit are taking place, thank you that that word, that anointing, begins to manifest wherever the listener is right now. And so, Father, we thank you for freedom and deliverance. We do covet the gifts of the spirit to be an operation and demonstration. Father, we pray that every ear is anointed to hear. Every heart is open and ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. So we receive it with thanksgiving now. We receive it by faith now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Father, we thank you. We thank you for joy unspeakable and full of glory. We thank you right now for your wisdom. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for this dominion and power and authority that you've given and granted unto us. We give you praise in advance for it, Father. We give you glory. Let your joy, yeah, let your joy manifest. You said put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And so we begin to praise you right now. We begin to thank you right now. We rebuke depression right now in Jesus' name. We rebuke any depressive, that depressive spirit, mindsets, the weight of things that, Father, we cast all of our care on you for you care for us. And so we thank you that you are getting involved in our situations. We thank you, Father, that through the avenue of prayer, we grant you permission to show up in our situation. And Father, we thank you for you've given us authority over all the power, the ability of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. We refuse to be hurt. We refuse to take offense. Father, we refuse to cave in and quit. And Father, I pray that you begin to ignite a passion and fire in your people today, that they have a do not quit spirit, a do not quit attitude, that Father, that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We thank you that the fire is ignited in your people today and that you stir up even the gift of faith for people to begin to supernaturally believe you for things. And so we thank you and we receive the fullness of everything you have for us. And we give you praise. We give you glory for it now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. God is so good. God is so gracious. He's so great. And so now it's like, okay, I know we've been hearing these things, Pastor. We've been, you've been talking about this stuff. But you know what? It's not just talk. It's not just rhetoric. And so we even talked about out of 1 Corinthians, the Bible talks about the kingdom of God. Listen, it's not just words. We're not just speaking idle words, but we're demonstrating God's power. God's power is being demonstrated. 
God's power is being demonstrated in your life in our lives, in this ministry, everywhere we go, the power of God is manifesting. So you're going to have to believe that we're going to trust God and we're going to believe God together. Amen. And so we come into agreement with you. We come into agreement with your homes. We come into agreement with your families that all is well with you. Listen, listen, mama, don't you worry about how you're going to pay for this or pay for that. Listen, you serve El Shaddai, the many breasted one. All sufficiency is in God and everything that you have need of will be manifested unto you. And so I need you to trust God and believe God. So now watch this. When we was, um, I was just sitting in, and uh, getting ready. One of the things in this series that we've been talking about becoming, um, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna just have to dive into this. I know it may not be quote unquote hermeneutically correct and all that the stuff that you know we as preachers learn and how to set up a message. I just feel like I just need to get into this thing. That there was a question that the Spirit of God began to now share and begin to ask me, and this it wasn't just for me, but it was for the people. It was for everyone. It was for you as well. And the question is simply this. Who have you become? Who have you become? Sometimes in this message of becoming, and I told you early on, and when we talk about becoming, we talk about manifesting who we are as the sons and daughters of God, that we come into the fullness of our sonship, that we come into the fullness. Man, I see that. Glory to God. We come into the fullness of what God created us and who he created us to be. And so with that, if you don't currently like the state that you're in right now and that the person that you become right now, God is saying this, that you need to just reevaluate the changes that need to be made and start making the changes in your life and start the process of change to start becoming that individual that you've always desired, but not just what you've desired to be, but who God has desired for you to be. The scripture even tells us this, that listen, as we continue, he says, Jesus said it like this, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. He says, if, 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 if you abide in me, that's it, and my words abide in you, that's in John 15 and seven. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Scripture also tells us that God grants us the desires of our heart. So when we abide in his word, now watch this, his will becomes our will. And so now when we go to God, we go fervently in the avenue and the authority of prayer, which grants God access to now get involved in our lives. And so we got to understand that was another thing God has been telling me to, to really push with people is the power of prayer. That as you begin to pray, that now as you begin to seek God, as you begin to declare and decree things, that now you grant God access into the situations of your life. But what begins to happen now is you begin to transform and change. So as your desires change, your prayer language changes. What you speak changes. How you believe changes. What you do changes. And so listen, well, listen, there will be no becoming without change. And so you're going to have to change some things. You're going to have to say, listen, we say it like this, that to do the same thing and expect different results is insanity. And so if we see that certain things are not happening. We got to take a real good inventory of ourselves and say, I'm the one constant in every equation. And so no matter what, whether it's relationships, I always connect with the wrong person. The people always um, um, let me down every time I wait a minute. You, you always blaming others. Do you ever take inventory and responsibility for where you are? Because listen, truth be told, we all should be further in life than where we currently are. If we fully apply and believe and trust what God has said. So now God wants us to walk in a place where we don't now take offense and become hurt by every little thing that's being said or done unto us. Why? Because we've taken God's word where love is concerned. We renew our minds to it by now systematically saying, okay, love is not rude. 
Love is not unmannerly. Love does not behave itself unbecomingly. And so when I have a moment where I'm acting rude, when I'm acting mean, now I got to go back and say, God, wait a minute. I did not follow what you said to do. So now I got to repent or change my mind about that and say, instead of saying, well, if that person wouldn't have said this, I wouldn't have done this. Well, God is saying you have control over your emotions. So what I need for you to do is to begin to enforce obedience within yourself to say, I'm going to do this this way because it's what God's word says. And what that does is it begins to transform and rewire your thinking to now submit to God's way of doing it and to say, you know what? I cannot be offended. Watch this. Nobody can offend you if you don't allow them to see you take offense. Now, this is for somebody because I don't go in here. So this is for somebody. You either take offense or you learn to let it go. See, love doesn't consider the thing that was done wrong to it. It says, OK, so I'm still going to love you and treat you right, even though you spoke ill against me. And you did something wrong against me because if I harbor bitterness and unforgiveness it's going to block what I'm believing God for. So now it short circuits my prayer life. And so now I'm trying to figure out why does it seem like whenever I'm praying, nothing is producing. And you got to go back and look at your heart from where your prayers come from. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you got to check and say, what is it that I'm harboring? And then when people ask you what's wrong, nothing. No, I'm good. Everything good. I'm good. And then you lie to yourself. And so what you're doing now is you're deceiving yourself because now you're not being honest with yourself to at least say, yes, I'm hurt. I was offended by what you said. I should not have taken that offense, but I was offended. So now I make a decision not to be offended anymore and to forgive for what's been done unto me. Now, watch this. It could have been a thing where you took it the wrong way. And so sometimes you may need to apologize. No, nope. what you mean? I need to apologize. They the ones that said it. But wait a minute. Did you really evaluate what they said so that now you can go back and say, maybe I took that wrong. And so you got to take. See, that's called maturity and growth. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm flowing in this area because this is part of you becoming. See, we are looking for the spectacular when we are overlooking the supernatural. The supernatural is God's super or his ability on our natural ability to get things done. See, the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit to cause us to walk in this thing. God has equipped us. He's put his spirit in us to empower us and to strengthen us to walk this thing through. Yes, you do have the ability to forgive. Along with it, the anointing can come on you to forget where you even begin to say, you know what? I don't even recall that anymore because you've gotten so focused and walking in this, the power of this love that now all of a sudden now it causes you to treat this person like they never did anything to you. I understand the aspects of some people saying, well, you know what? You can forgive people, but you can't always trust them. And I've said that myself where, you know what? God commands us to forgive, but not necessarily to trust people. But now watch this. You're still going to have to come to a point if you're really serious about rectifying the relationship that you're going to have to begin to release trust again. And you're going to have to do it by faith. Sometimes trust is given before it's earned. And so sometimes you got to begin to say, I know you've hurt me in the past. And now if we're trying to rebuild this relationship, there's going to have to come a point where I'm going to have to begin to release some type of trust and love and trust that God will begin to work on my heart as well as on your heart. And so now that this thing is begin to mend and to be restored again, God is in the restoration business. And during this time, God is saying, I want to supernaturally restore relationships that now have been deteriorated through whether it's lack of communication, whether it's Satan coming in, trying to bring division, 
whether it's somewhere your heart has really been hurt and because other people have disappointed you and the person that you held in high esteem, they didn't follow through with something. And now whether it was intentionally or unintentionally, now you've harbored hurt, you've harbored animosity and you trying to figure out why am I schizophrenic and my I'm one minute I'm good, next minute I'm not. And God is saying you need to reconnect and reestablish some things in your life so that you can move forward to the next level. Man, who this for somebody? I, I'm telling you, this is surgery. This surgery that God is doing. And watch this. He said, <laughs> see, it, it, it's not just self-help that we're talking about, but it's allowing the presence of the Holy Spirit, the word of God to transform us into a brand new person. It's time for a brand new you. It's time for a brand new me. It's time for us to increase. We should be better and further along than where we currently are. And so whatever area it is in your life, you're going to have to take ownership. What's the ownership that you need to take? What's the thing that you need to say? Yeah, I know the idea of it has been good. The ideal um, to have the ideal relationship. We say stuff like relationship goals and everybody wants to use that phrase. And I'm telling you, you're going to have to put that work into the relationship to get to where God wants it to be. You're going to have to have times of compromise. When I say compromise, I mean sitting down and communicating to say, say in a marriage relationship, everything a husband wants to do, the wife may not want to do and vice versa. But sometimes it's just saying, I'm going to now come into your world because this is what something that means something to you. So I'll do it, even though I may not like it, but I'm going to do it because I love you and because it's enjoyable. You never know, you might end up liking it. And so before you know it, it begins to grow. And it can be in business relationships. God is saying, you got to now be intentional about your growth. Be intentional about becoming who he created you to be. And that means discipline. And that's the word that keeps ringing is discipline with intentionality and consistency. He says you have to consistently renew your mind. You have to consistently begin to speak. OK, OK, OK. Now, now I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you something Now this is what he began to say. And he says this is almost like what you're going to in this in this in this time of becoming. God is saying you're going to rebrand yourself. It's almost like rebranding to reintroduce yourself to some people, because watch this. Some people who are going to reconnect remembered how they disconnected from you. See, that's how you were when they disconnected. But because it's been so long, they don't even realize that God has increased you and grown you up and you've grown up since then. And now you're a different person. So when they come back into your vicinity, they come back with skepticism, not realizing that a tremendous work has been done in your life. And so it's not your job to try to convince them. It's your job to just be. And so now when you just become who you are and just walk it out, now you let God handle the consequences of that thing. You cannot make anyone receive you into their lives, but you can change how you present you in your life to people. So now this is the thing. God is saying in becoming, I need for you to begin to evaluate every area of your life and judge yourself. That's why scripture says in 1 Corinthians 11 that we judge ourselves, least we be judged. God said, I want you to take inventory first before I have to come and reveal some stuff to you and begin to work on some stuff in you. He says it's better if you go ahead and check yourself and begin to make the, uh, the, the necessary adjustments versus now your parent had to come in and begin to do something. That's like me telling my children, my wife and I saying, you better clean up that room. My mom used to do this with us growing up. It's like, y'all, y'all need to clean that room up. And if we didn't, she would come in like a whirlwind and begin to sweep up everything. I mean, clothes, toys, it could be whatever, and start throwing stuff. It's like, wait a minute, mom, what you doing? Well, I gave y'all the chance to do it. And so since you didn't want to do it, I'm going to come in and do it. And then when they come in and do it, all of a sudden, they're like, hold on, hold on. Now you want to try to start? No, -uh, you had your chance. And so now what God is saying, I'm giving you your chance because whom the Lord loves, he chastens. And so it's a dangerous thing, the scripture says, to fall in the hands of the living God. And so in order to become one of the first things you're going to have to begin to do is, and glory to God, come on, Holy Ghost, is you're going to have to begin to submit. You're going to have to watch this. 
let me just go ahead and say it like this. The spirit of the fear of the Lord is going to have to hit your life. You're going to have to have a reverence for God, a reverential awe and fear of him. That means respect. Um, um, my pastor, you said years ago, um, it's a, like a wholesome displeasure and displeasing God. You hate to disappoint him by doing something that you know hurts his heart to say, OK, God, I know I've been doing this thing. And this is why. Watch this. When you start cleaning up, when the fear of the Lord hits your life, you listen, you're the same person behind closed doors as you are in front of the camera. You're the same person, you're the same person of integrity that when nobody is watching, that you carry yourself like that as when you're in front of people. You know, because, you know, people, we can be two faces sometimes. One minute we say stuff or we'll say things like, well, I'll just say this because it's you. But listen, is it wrong or right to say it? Whether it's another person or whether it's whatever. Listen, if it's wrong, it's still wrong. Whether everybody else hears you or not, it's still wrong to do it. And so when you talk about building up character, we're going have to take it reevaluate things now watch this that means that means we're gonna have to put off some stuff that we like doing oh lord let's hit this in becoming the fullness of who god created you to be some stuff you're gonna have to stop doing that you like and that's the thing for a lot of people they want the benefits of the the fruit of the spirit the power of god but don't want the disciplines that go with it. And now in becoming, we're disciples of Christ. This, 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 this is, folks, that's just it. Scripture talks about there, in the book of Romans, there are things that may be right for you to do, but you can't do it because you're talking about the stronger and the weaker. There are things that may be okay for you to do, but you can't do it because it'll hurt the person that's in front of you, then they'll take what you're doing and then run with it. Or it might be vice versa, something that you're doing and because you realize that you're doing it and it's something that you shouldn't be doing and now somebody stronger in that area comes, you gotta be mindful of how we talk to people, not to be condemning. And this is something that the Holy Spirit shared with me and I wrote it down. This is a personal thing and I think it was good. Um, I, I had it on a little sticky, but I do remember the gist of it. He says, don't be hard on somebody that's not developed in an area that you're gifted in. Don't be hard on somebody that's underdeveloped or not developed in an area that you're gifted in. Let me, let me go ahead and break it down. See, for some of you, you are naturally good at certain things. You naturally have a natural tendency for certain things because it's just a part of your natural makeup. And so now when you deal with people that's not like you, sometimes there's a tendency to be hard on them because they don't do what you do. But the only reason you do it is because God gifted you to do it. And the only reason is like, is it just innately in you? And so there are things innately in them that's hard for you to do. And so now it got to be vice versa. You have to give grace and mercy and to cut people slack in your walking and development together. Some things, that's why we really got to stop and deal with this. Because some things will be so hard. Man, I, I'm telling you, I used to do this with my wife. I think there are times I know she's done it with me. We've done it with each other. We've done it with our children. There are some things that God had to check me and say, why are you so hard on her with that? Now, this is something that's just natural for you. But it ain't natural for her. And vice versa. There's some things she's just naturally good at that now if she look at me, it's like, well, why can't you just do that? It's like, well, it ain't as easy to me as it is to you. But see, this is the grace we got to extend, because what happens now is if you don't, they'll become friction in the relationship and now they'll cause separation. See, watch this. Because of your differences and the focusing in on your differences, you become separated versus realizing that God brought us into covenant relationship so that there can be, be an exchange of strengths for weaknesses so that I don't look at this as something to divide us, but really something to connect us because I, my grace is supposed to be here for her for that. And the grace that she has is supposed to be there for me. And now I got to be humble enough to receive the grace that's on her 
And she has to be humble enough to receive the grace that's on me so that we both can become who God called us to be. See, God brought us into this covenant relationship for purpose. Oh, man. I'm, I'm telling you, there's so many things we're hitting on right now. I hope y'all going to have to go back and rewatch this because this stuff, I'm, I'm totally off my notes. This is straight out by the spirit of God. He's just pouring this stuff out of me right now to say, and that's what I felt like I was supposed to do, that there was supposed to be things that he just wanted to attack and to deal with and to give you answers to questions and problems that you've been going through, that if you simply begin to take his word Put it in your mind and say, wait a minute. When I say that is to say, I'm going to walk out and do what he said. I'm going to finally do it. Watch this with consistency. So when I feel like doing it, I do it. When I don't feel like doing it, I do it. Because when I do that, now I'm becoming, I am being transformed. My mind is being rewired to think a different way now. So when my mind is rewired, now my actions are completely going to be rewired. See, what most people do is they try to stop the action without stopping or changing the thinking that caused the action. So really now, see, <laughs> oh man, um, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. See, the knowing of the truth or the intimacy with the truth or the intermingling, that word know is like the word intercourse. When we become so intimate with it that it changes us, it grooms us. And now I don't have to tell you to stop doing certain things. Me helping you to change the way you think about it will cause you to stop doing it versus me getting the attitude with you every time you do it now. And to be with you enough, but watch this, sometimes that's why the Bible says speak the truth in love. We got to, even when we're trying to speak the truth, even in covenant relationships, we still got to do it with the right attitude. So we need to check ourselves before we even release out of our mouths the words that we need to say to them. We need to filter it through love. We need to filter it through grace. And sometimes when you just off the cuff say stuff out of an emotional state that you're in, usually that emotional word that you're saying is not the right word at that time. It may be the right word, but the wrong attitude behind it. You hear what I'm saying? And so God wants to help you because some of y'all, y'all, who man, come on, that's good, God. Some of y'all, y'all are each other's answer. You're each other's answer. Come on. See, I'm doing marriage counseling. I'm doing uh, spiritual development. I'm, see, all this stuff being wrapped up, God is dealing with a lot of these things right now. And he's saying this, the answer that you have, you go into other people, but sometimes having the conversation with the person that you live with. But you said, well, the person I live with, that's the, they the problem. But sometimes, I understand, hear me what I'm saying. I'm not negating counseling. I do counseling, all of that. I believe in it. But sometimes if you just sit and listen, if you learn how to listen with the intent to now say, I want to solve. And when I say solve, I want to be a blessing to you to help meet that need. Sometimes when you're talking to people, they just want you to listen. But now you got to understand at the same time. OK, I need to listen with the intent of, OK, this is what you really need from me. So now my job is to now come and meet that need. But to make sure that I'm communicating right what the need is. And now I'm hearing right what the need is. And so now if my wife says she needs time with me, okay, my job is to schedule it. It's just that simple. Okay, let's schedule the time. Okay, what is it that we like to do? Let's just, it could be a Friday night. It could be whatever. Okay, what else that we, do we need to work on? Because if, if, I'm, if we really want quote unquote relationship goals, what's the goal? What's the goal? You know, we say that. What's the goal? Identify the end from the beginning. What is it that we're trying to get to? What's the vision of this thing? Well, I want us to be happy. What does that look like to you? What does happy mean to you? Because happy for me might be sitting around watching the game on a Sunday and chilling, eating some wings, and I'm happy. But you sitting there miserable because you're ready to hit the streets and go out and travel and do all this stuff. So our two definitions of happy might be two different things. We're going to have to now come and say, OK, what is it that we're really looking for? I want us to have this healthy. What does healthy look like? 
See, this is these are the identifying factors and God's word. Number one needs to be the mirror that we see. But now, OK, if God's word, God's word says husbands dwell with your wives according to knowledge. And now I got to study. That means I got to study my wife. And so now I've done this. I missed the ball. And my wife said, no, I said what I wanted. You just didn't hear me. I'm like, dog, then I'm go back and remember. What did she say? When did she say it? I'm like, I really don't know. And all I can do at that point is, I'm sorry. OK, can you retell it to me? Now, her job is to be OK, not to sit there with an attitude. See, you don't care about me. Wait a minute. I'm, now I'm trying to rectify the situation. So don't allow your emotions to cut off the healing process. See, this is where God comes in. This is where maturity comes in, where we put down our emotions and say, and we walk in the spirit. The spirit of love will say, love is not, listen, is ever ready to believe the best. It will not hold on to a suffered wrong. It takes no account of it. So I'm maturity says I'm going to have to forget that now versus putting it in my files to bring up when we have an argument. See, but you did this then and you did this then and you did this then. That's what we do. We pile up stuff so that we can pull it out at any time where we want to use it as a weapon of defense to either cut or to defend ourselves. And now God is saying both of you wrong because you being rude and mean and then they being rude and mean and that none of the neither one of you happen now. And now we say we're going to split for irreconcilable differences because neither one of you want to grow up. Man, shoot, boy, you better come on, Holy Ghost. <laughs> How can two blood washed, blood bought believers full of the Holy Ghost claims that they're submitted to the word of God? I don't care what other people have said. If y'all saying this, well, I got married too young. I got married. I didn't know this. Well, you can know it now. Stop telling me this stuff just because you just don't want to be with them no more. Okay. All right. See, no, I ain't got time for this no more. I got to speak truth. And I get it. Sometimes people have come together for those reasons. But listen, man, when you've made a covenant and commitment, are you committed to reigniting? Are you committing to now reestablishing some things? Well, she don't look like what she used to. You don't look like what you used to. Come on now. Come on. We got to stop this. Love grows. Love grows. I got too much time invested in my wife. I love her too much. I can't imagine my life without it. No. So that means if something go wrong, man, doggone it, Negro, we got to figure this out together. We got to do this together. We, we want to laugh together. If I laugh with you, we cry together. I'm there with you. I'm there with you. So we going, I love the fact that we can laugh about stuff that we used to just get an attitude about and hold on to things in the past. Now, some stuff, some moments, yeah, I just said something stupid. And it's like, doggone, I know I said what I said was stupid. Now, see, now, I ain't get off my message. This is all part of becoming. See, these, these are the day in, day out, integral things. Now, see, some of y'all ready to cast out devils, but you can't control your emotion. See, so you're not developed enough to even control you. So when Satan comes up, you back out in fear because you ain't even strong enough and developed enough how to even rule your own household. This is why God said for leaders, if you can't run your house right, you have no business leading my church. Develop. It's time. Yeah, see, these are the hard conversations. See, I know, see, 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 everybody be typing when thus saith the Lord. I call increase upon your life. Everybody want to hear that? But sometimes the strongest word to your increase is repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Get what's blocking your blessing out the way. And then the floodgates of heaven are open. Ooh, shoot, shut up. What you say, doggone it. <laughs> what? <laughs> God is good, man. Some of y'all like, ouch, mm, preach, come on, mm, yeah, come on, hit it. That, hit. The scripture says in Proverbs, a wise man will love you if you rebuke him. Thank you for telling me about me. You know, I've had more respect for people who are just honest with me. Even members who've left over the years and things when we've had meetings, I respect that more than the person who lied in my face. 
I just got to be honest. I, I do. I respect people. At least say, these are some of the reasons. And I was like, you know what? I can respect it that you took enough time to come talk face to face to share. It's kind of like exit interviews in a, in a, in a, on a job. So that at least I know what I need to work on. Be honest with you. Be honest with God. He knows the secrets of our hearts. He knows how we're feeling internally, but we keep trying to act like ain't nothing wrong when we know something's wrong. Deal with it. Get it out of you. This is transformational talk here. And say, God, forgive me for I have sinned against you. Man, I've just, I've, I've been a fool. See, when the prodigal son came to himself, he says, I'm going back to my father's house from whence I came. He was eating with the pigs. This man had an inheritance. That goes back to Galatians 4. If you still acting like a child, listen, you cannot put on your inheritance as a son. And God is saying, please do not give up your role to somebody else when I called you to do it. Who the strong? That's what's so, oh, glory to God. Father, we thank you for freedom. We thank you for refreshing restoring, rebuilding, reigniting. See, sometimes before you build, you have to raise a building, R-A-Z-E. That means to tear it down. You need, in some cases, tear down old constructs. There's a new culture being set. A culture of love, integrity, excellence, power, faith, that we're expecting to see signs, wonders, and miracles. All excuses are being removed. What comes to mind is the man at the pool of Bethesda. And when the question was asked, will you be made whole? Well, every time when the angels come to trouble the water, I don't have anybody to put me in. Okay, well now your answer is showing up in front of you. 38 years in this situation, 18 years of woman bound. Woman, will thou be loosed? Woman, thou art loosed. It's time to come out your grave clothes, Lazarus, and I command you to come forth now. Loose them and let them go. See, some of you thinking. I can see somebody processing, thinking. <laughs> see, receive freedom will come. Oh, man. Come on. Let me come on, Holy Ghost. You better give us these nuggets. Sometimes you're so busy trying to think through to see if you're going to agree with what I'm saying. If you just doggone receive what I'm saying, the freedom will come and your eyes will be open, Paul. See, you walking like Saul when, when God called you to be Paul and the scales need to come off your eyes. I want to say so much right now. What I'm seeing. But I can show you better than I'm going to tell you. The kingdom of God suffer violence and the violent take it by force. And God is raising up an army to declare and to decree into areas. And transformation is going to take place. Mm. I'm going to leave you with this. Some of you might be saying that I want to be more understanding, patient, loving, Diligent, consistent, 
fearless, bold, trustworthy. God said you can work on all of that. But the seed of my word must be deposited in your heart through the avenue of meditation, declaring and decreeing, reading. Whatever you major on with your eyes, ears and mouth enters into your heart. And then when you act, start acting on it consistently, it overwhelms and overtakes your life. It's called the law of receiving. I used to teach it all the time to a group of teenagers. Whatever you major on with your eyes, whatever you major on with your ears, or whatever you keep talking out your mouth, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Do not forget the weapons of your warfare. The weapon of praise and thanksgiving, the weapon of the authority of your tongue to navigate, just like the helm of the ship, it says in the Bible, that whatever you speak sets the thermostat, says it's the navigation system to your life. So don't one minute speak faith and then the next minute speak fear because now you're going all over the place. And now you're being double minded and a double minded man is unstable in all all his ooh, in all his ways. And let not that man think he should receive anything from God. You got to lock in, stay in and be all in and be consistent. And you will start becoming who you were created to be. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory and we give you honor for your goodness, your grace and your mercies that are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Now, Father, we pray for those right now who've not made a decision, but they, they've been they've been toying with it. The decision to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Let them know that there is a literal heaven to gain and the hell to shun. We pray that the eyes of their understanding have been opened and enlightened. And we pray right now that they will receive Jesus now. Now, those that are right here under the sound of my voice, whether you're live, whether watching replay. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord, I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I receive you as my Lord. I make you the Lord of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. I want you to say this, say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord, and I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Glory to God. I'm telling you, man, this, 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 this. Now watch this. The Bible also declares that you can receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. Mark 11, 24, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. That would have to include the Holy Spirit. Then when you ask for him to come and to dwell on the inside of you, this is God's power, his ability to come and dwell in you. The third person of the Godhead, the Bible says, and you have the ability to speak with other tongues as he gives you utterance. See, the power of praying in tongues or what's called praying in the spirit, you can build yourself up. The Bible says on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. What does that mean? That means that the more you pray in tongues, the stronger your capacity to believe takes place and happens. Also, you can pray out mysteries, divine secrets. That means things that have been a mystery to you in your life of how to handle things that you may not know how to pray for something as you are to pray for it. But the Holy Spirit will help you that as you begin to open up your mouth and add voice and then watch this. He'll give you a heavenly language. Watch. See, 
Some people haven't been really taught out of how to receive the Holy Spirit. And then the power and the ability, like what, what tongues does for you and praying in tongues, because they just seen people have fits in churches. And, and I don't get, I don't speak against any of that. You know, some people, different people have different experiences, but you don't have to twist and fall and roll on the floor. And so some of that has brought a fear to you to even receive Holy Spirit in your life. And so now watch this, he's a gentleman. Then that there's power that will come. Now, sometimes you'll sense that power. You'll sense his presence like, man, this feels great. This feels good. He wants to be your partner in life. After Jesus receiving Jesus, greatest experience you can ever have. I remember 16 years old. I had already prayed the prayer to receive him, but I remember this night, May 1991, a Monday night, May. i never forget it. I was in a service. The man of God had the invitation to Christ. I went up. I remember what I was wearing. I went into this side room. I said, yeah, I was wearing, I had this black kind of cargo type pants on, black slacks on, white canvas type shoes, this white shirt with stripes with a sailboat. I remember that thing like it was yesterday. Went into this side room. One of the assistant pastors was there. Um, he prayed over me. And I remember Reverend Leroy Banks, never forget him. He's going on home to be with the Lord. I remember he led me in this prayer to receive the Holy Spirit and laid hands on me. And I'm telling you that language began to flow out of my, the Bible says out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. I was 16 years old at the time, I believe. And I just began to pray. And after that, two weeks after that, I remember receiving a prophetic word from this youth pastor about how God was gonna use my life and everything that that man has spoken has come to pass. I wanna give you that opportunity to receive the Holy Spirit now. Wherever you are, just say this, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now. I receive you to dwell in me, to live in me, and to live through me. Yeah. You've now given me the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me utterance. Yeah, some of y'all know, y'all heard me pray this prayer. Pray it now, mm hmm Say, come inside me, I receive you. Now watch this. Come on, let's begin to pray. Some of you, there's one person in particular that's coming to my mind. I want to be sensitive. I don't want to call you out. It is a sister in the faith. Come on, come on, keep praying. Come on, come on. I, got, I feel like I need to go ahead and say it because there's this distance because we're not here physically together. Kelly, God has just shown me your face, sweetheart. He says, as you begin to pray in the spirit more and more every day, watch the transformation that takes place in you and watch the power that begins to flow. Your life is gonna be radically transformed. He said just every day, just to, you, and you're gonna so enjoy the presence of God, that's gonna be your therapy. As you get in his presence, you're gonna see, cause he want, he's been wanting to visit you. And you've been wanting to experience this. And he says, I see it. It's like, I mean, the power of God is gonna hit you in your home. But do it consistently. That's the prerequisite, consistency. Put on your favorite worship music and just begin to say, thank you, Holy Spirit. You see, talk to him like a person, because he is a person, the third person of the Godhead. A lot of times people talk to God the Father and God the Son. We speak to Jesus, we speak to the Father. But talk to the Holy Spirit, he's a person. He's the one here in the earth with the church to assist us and to help us. Glory to God. Lastly, there may be somebody out there that want to join this church. You want to join this ministry. We implore you, connect today where we can pray over you, love you, minister the word of life to you. If you don't have a church home, I want you to prayerfully consider. If you need to ask us questions, the vision of the ministry, what we're about, we would love to talk to you and connect with you. Saints, family, friends, we love you for making the decisions that you made. You can send us an email at info at spiritifier.us, info at spiritifier.us. 
You can also send a message to us through one of our uh, streaming, uh, one of our social media platforms. We want to connect with you. We love you and we appreciate you so much. Well, y'all, at this time, we want to honor God in our giving. It's so important to sow. See, sowing causes God to get involved in our finances. There's a spiritual principle, the law of reciprocity. Give and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. God will cause men to give unto your bosom. The Bible says, whatsoever measure you meet, it shall be measured. I want to implore you to do this. It's your job to sow. It's God's job to honor his word. But see, these laws are already in effect in the earth. See, the law, see, a law is an established principle that will work for anybody that gets involved with it. This is why you even see people who don't necessarily acknowledge Jesus, what the Bible would call a Gentile, those without covenant with God. That they are walking this principle and see their businesses produce and grow. Because it's a principle, it's a law. Even as we honor God in our tithes. That as we honor him with that 10 percent, some of you need to make a decision. God, I'm going to begin to consistently honor you in this area of my life. God promises that the windows of heaven will remain open. The blessing is on you. Listen, he's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. In the book of Genesis, before a law was ever implemented, requiring us to tithe. This was something that was done out of an appreciation and love for God for giving Abram the victory in the battle that he just went into. So he brought it unto the high priest Melchizedek, who Jesus is a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And Melchizedek dispensed and dispersed the blessing upon Abram because Abram initiated this thing with this tithe. And he says, because you gave me the victory, I'm going to love on you, God, and honor you in my giving. So when we now give under this new covenant, this new dispensation of grace, we don't do it out of obligation. We do it out of love. Thank you, Father. I'm going to honor you with my tithes, offerings, and gifts of love. God says, I can trust you in this financial area. And so now, watch this. We are blessed to be a blessing until all families of the earth have been blessed. God wants us to make impact in this earth and an imprint in this earth. We should be ruling and reigning financially in this world. Yeah. We should be captains of industry, ruling and reigning. I'll get back to that fivefold blessing in in Genesis, where he wants us to be fruitful, to multiply, to subdue, replenish, and have dominion in the earth. We're to dominate. So whatever God is leading you to do, there's some information on your screen as to how to sow, different ways in giving. I want you to prayerfully consider what it is God would have for you to sow in the gear. Praise God. And I've come to the point where I just teach the word of God. This is a personal trust relationship between you and God. And I've, and, I've, and I've come to this thing. I'm not going to take it personal if you don't trust God. <laughs> Amen. I can't take that personal. I get on people. What are you tithing? You're giving. What are you? And I listen, I believe if you, wherever your heart is, your treasure is, your heart is. If you haven't sown into this ministry and you've received constantly, I question whether your heart is here. Because scripture tells us this. You can say I'm with you, but I see no track record of it. That causes you to question. You will give to others. I, I, I'm just, hey, you know what? I'm not going to hold back. I'm not, out of, I'm not out of anger or animosity because my trust is in God. But it's my obligation to teach you. See, it's, an, it's a trust relationship with God. Praise God. So the information is on your screen. You can uh, give by text, cash app. Um, there's a QR code. You can um, scan the QR code and it'll take you to the giving page. And whatever God tells you to do, do it. Glory to God. I, I just feel like I want to say that. Somebody said, well, God ain't tell me to tithe. What do you mean he tell you? It's already, you see the principles in the book. You just have to make the decision to do it. 
You ain't got to pray about that. <laughs> you just got to make the decision to do it. And now you'll see the benefits from it. Some of you, you will see instant benefits. Some of you will see instant benefits because God just wants to show you and to get your faith stirred up in it. Praise God. Well, listen, y'all, we're out of time, but certainly not out of message. Huh, I'm enjoying this message of becoming. And I, I, I knew that this would be a catalyst for some people and some things that transformation is taking place in people's lives. And we want to dig deeper and dive deeper into areas. And we're going to be intentional and systematic in things of just sowing this word over and over again, providing different opportunities for this word to be planted in different ways and platforms and, and different events, whatever we need to do. This has to happen now. Jesus is coming back, folks, and we want to make sure that we're being faithful and committed to doing what he birthed us in this earth to do. So I'm praying for you, for your well-being. I surround you with faith and love. I speak favor over your lives and I declare that all is well with you. Love you guys. God bless you. What we hear is Spirit of Fire Fellowship are changing the culture, igniting the passion, and living the dream. God bless you all. See you next time. Peace.